What's up guys, it's River, and today we're gonna learn how to master your Sony a6100. I'm gonna show you every technical setting that you need to know to turn your 6100 into an absolute beast and get results that look way better than this camera should really be able to give you. And I'm gonna keep this tutorial short and to the point with no fluff, just the things that you need to know to get the most out of your camera. Let's get into it. By the way, if you're new to the channel, we talk about anything and everything to do with camera gear, including teaching you guys how to get the most out of your camera. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you wanna see more content. And as always, all the products and everything we talk about today, I'll make sure to leave links down below in the description, so be sure to check that out. Let's get into the video. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is go over all the buttons and dials so you know what does what on your camera. Okay, so right at the top of the camera, you'll see a little mode dial. So it's got a bunch of symbols on it that probably make no sense, but I'm gonna explain them to you. So the green one that says auto, believe it or not, it does auto. It does pretty much everything for you. It's kind of stu like stupid mode. It pretty much just is set it and forget it, but I really don't recommend using it because if you're gonna buy a camera this nice, you should really learn how to use it. So the next one is P, which is program auto. Basically this automatically sets the shutter and aperture speed for you. And the only thing that really changes is your ISO. You basically control the ISO. I don't really recommend using that, but I'm just explaining what it does. So right after that, we have S, which basically is shutter priority. Basically, you control the shutter speed and the camera does the rest. After that, you have aperture priority, where basically you adjust the sh aperture and the camera does the rest. And then there's program auto, where you basically control your ISO and the camera adjusts your aperture and shutter. I personally don't recommend using any of these modes. What we wanna to get to is M, which is manual exposure, where basically we get full control over your camera. So whatever your camera's shooting, we have control over it. So the camera isn't making mistakes and we're actually making these creative decisions. And if you wanna shoot video, you'll actually see an icon right next to that, which kind of looks like a film strip, which is right there. And this is going to be the movie mode. You actually can't initiate movie mode from manual mode, but it doesn't carry you over the settings and your video settings might look different than your manual settings. I recommend setting up, going to movie mode, setting up your settings there, and then going back to manual, setting up your settings there so you're shooting photos the way you want and then video the way you want. Okay, so right after we've looked at the mode dial, the next thing we wanna look at is the aperture dial. So right next to the mode dial is this unmarked black dial. If you turn it to the left, your aperture will open up. If you turn it to the right, your aperture will close down. Uh, the higher the aperture, the less light you get. The lower the aperture, the more light you get. And now let's take a look at the back of the camera. So right here, if you hit right on this D-pad, this allows you to hit up, down, left, right. If you hit right on the D-pad, your ISO will come up. Now this is the sensitivity of your sensor. I tend to keep my ISO right around 800 for most cameras, but it will depend on what exactly you're shooting and where you are. This camera is great in low light, so you could go as high as 6400, 10,000 and you should get pretty decent results. For the time being, I'm gonna keep it at 200 just to keep my screen dark and you guys can see it better. Um, right next to that is drive mode. I'm gonna show you guys drive modes later. But when, you're, when you have your menu here, if you press the up button, which is display, it will go through, show you different menus and different settings and where everything's sitting at. Um, if you just keep hitting it, it'll kind of cycle through. I tend to just like to see where my audio's at um, and my histogram, and that's really all I need. But if you hit up, hit up again, it will show you where your focus mode, face detect, and all that other stuff is. And this also has a button in the middle, so if you click down, hit it in the middle, it will allow you to go into settings. Uh, right next to this, uh, I guess, scroll wheel slash D-pad combo, is the FN menu. This will open up a quick menu that allows you to change all of your major settings. This is something I'm gonna go more in depth into later. I just wanna show you guys where the button is. And then there's the menu button. So most of you guys probably could figure out what the menu button does, but this allows you to go into the menu and actually change all of your software settings in this camera. And right next to that is a flash button. You don't need the flash button unless you actually have a flash, unless you're actually using flash uh, externally. And below that is the playback button right here. This allows you to actually go in and take a look at what you've actually shot. And next to that is a garbage can icon. This allows you to change your, uh, change your um, white balance when you're in normal mode. This is really not the way to do it. 
But if you're in playback mode and you want to hit the trash can, it'll allow you to delete stuff. But that's probably stuff you guys already knew. Now, the last thing I want to show you guys is this tiny little bun right here that looks like a little red nib. It probably didn't even look like a button to most of you. Probably looked like a design choice. Now, this is actually what initiates the movie recording on your camera. If you want to take a photo, you have to hit this button right up here, which is the shutter. But if you want to do movie, it's uh, you have to hit this button. Now this button is not ideal to hit, so I'm gonna show you a way to fix that. So you wanna make sure you're in movie mode. Um, you wanna go to menu and you wanna go down to the second page of your menu. So right here, it should. if you look at the top, it should be the second icon that's selected. And you basically wanna go through here. You wanna hit right on the D-pad and keep going until you see movie with shutter. You wanna make sure this is on and now when you hit the shutter button in movie mode, it'll initiate movie recording. All right guys, so next up, let's look at the actual settings inside of the camera menu that we need to adjust to get the most out of our camera. So once you're in manual mode, you, you wanna hit the menu button and it'll open up a bunch of options for you. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna go into file format and you'll see three options, raw, JPEG, and raw and JPEG. So basically it's pretty simple. If you plan on editing your photos and you wanna do anything mildly professional, you wanna pick raw. But if you're planning on doing just something quick and simple, maybe you don't really plan on doing anything editing, it's just casual photos, you wanna pick JPEG. But maybe you're not sure, in that case, raw and JPEG. Raw takes up the most amount of space on your card, JPEG takes up the least, and with raw and JPEG, that's probably gonna take up the most because you're shooting both formats. Um, you actually can still get great results from JPEG. Don't feel like you need to shoot raw just to get great results. You will still get great looking images just from JPEG. And right below that, let's say you went into, let's say you pick JPEG, you wanna go into quality and in quality you'll see extra fine, fine, and standard. Now you wanna go for extra fine because it's gonna give you the most amount of quality and it's not really going to take up that much more space. But let's say you pick raw instead, this is still going to stay the, fine, stay the same, but just know that this does not apply to raw, this only applies to your JPEG. And right below that, you'll see JPEG image size. Now, it's 24, 12, and six. I do recommend keeping this at 24 because there's no benefit to reducing your med megapixel count. And right below that is aspect ratio. Now, aspect ratio is kind of interesting. So when you're looking at this image of me talking to you right now, this is a 16 by nine image. But if this image was a little bit taller, it would be three by two, as in it's three long and two tall. Uh, but and, and you know, if whatever this image is, it's 16 long, nine tall, something like that. But basically what I do recommend doing is keeping this at three by two. This only applies to photo mode, but this just gives you a little bit more room at the top and bottom that you can crop out. It's better to have too much room than too little room, unless you know you're gonna be shooting in a specific format like 16 by nine, which is what you're looking at right now. Um, if you think you're gonna be shooting in this specific format, just go ahead and pick that in your menu. And one by one is square. This is for people that want that vintage artsy Instagram look. If you're someone like that, go ahead and choose one by one. I personally prefer to shoot at three by two for all my photos. And right after that, you'll see long exposure noise reduction. Now what you wanna do is make sure you have this off. You wanna do your noise reduction in Photoshop and Lightroom. Uh, you don't wanna do it in camera. Not that the noise reduction in the Sony cameras isn't great, it's just that you wanna maintain as much quality. You don't want any kind of smoothness if it doesn't need to be there. Now another thing I do wanna mention, assuming you picked file format JPEG, you'll notice right below that you'll see high ISO noise reduction. Let's say you're shooting at some ridiculous high ISO for low light photography. This option will be available to you. It's not available to you in RAW, cause again, RAW photos, just you're getting all the data without anything being done to it. Um, I actually do recommend keeping this off simply because, like I said earlier, you don't wanna have the camera add any kind of smoothness or detail reduction. You wanna keep your full image if you plan on doing any kind of editing. Um, I personally find even if I shoot JPEGs, I'm gonna edit them in my phone and Snapseed or whatever photo editing app I use. But if you're feeling extra lazy, just go ahead and set it to normal just in case you're shooting in very low light conditions and you don't want it to look too grainy. Color space, you wanna leave exactly as it is, even if you're going to be editing. The only other option is Adobe RGB, and this really applies to people that are printing, but again, you wanna leave the color space exactly how it is. All right guys, next up, let's take a look at how to set up your movie mode in this camera. So once you're in movie mode, you've changed your mode dial, you wanna hit the menu button and you'll the first thing you'll see is exposure mode. Now I'm already set to manual exposure, but if you just wanna go into it and 
take a look and make sure you're actually in manual exposure and not something else, go ahead and do that. And after that, you'll see file format. Now you'll have a couple. Now you'll see XAVSC 4K. This is specifically for shooting 4K. And then you'll see XAVSC HD. Now this is specifically for shooting HD modes. If you go into the 4K mode, you're only going to get 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second. But in HD mode, you'll have uh, 60, 24, 30, and 120 frames per second. And right below that, you'll see record settings. So you wanna go into record setting and go into that and you'll see a bunch of options. Now, one thing that I really wanna make sure I uh, tell you guys about is you'll see there's 60 frames per second, which is 60p, and next to it, you'll see 50m and 25m. Now, what that deals with is the megabit rate. Now, 50 megabits basically means you'll get more data, more color information, just a more robust video. So if you're not trying to save space, always go with the higher number. So if we're shooting 60 frames per second, we're gonna go with 50 megabits per second. If we're shooting 120, we're gonna go with 100 megabits per second. It's just overall going to give you a better image. Now, I'm not gonna show you guys the 4K option simply because when I go into 4K in this camera, it's not going to let me externally record my screen from the thing, it's a whole technical thing. But basically, when you go into 4K mode, you'll basically see 24, 30 frames per second. You wanna make sure you pick your frame rate with the highest number uh, of megabits next to it. So the next thing I wanna show you guys is SNQ mode. Again, I don't necessarily recommend using it for everybody, but some of you guys probably wanna know what this does. So when you hit menu and you go into the second menu on, page, on the first page, you wanna go into SNQ mode, hit the middle button, you'll get in there, and then you'll see two things, record setting and frame rate. Basically, record setting means what frame rate it's going to show you the final video at. Most people pick 24 frames per second because it's the cinematic frame rate and it's the least amount of frames, so the lower your record setting, the slower the slow motion will be. SNQ really stands for slow and, slow and quick motion. So as you can see, if I pick, let's say 30 frames per second, it goes from five, at the very bottom, you'll see four times slow motion, but if I pick 24, it'll go to five times slow motion. So it really depends on how, what your final frame rate is and how slow you want it to look. And in your frame rates, you have a bunch of options like 120 frames per second, 60, 30, 15. Now you might notice that some of these frame rates are actually lower than the final frame rate. So if you pick 120, it'll take 120 frames per second and slow it down to fit 24 frames per second, which will give you slow motion. But if you pick 15 frames per second, basically it will only shoot 15 frames, but it will speed everything up to make it fit 24 frames per second, and this will give you a time lapse. So if you're planning on doing slow motion, go with 120, go with 60. But if you wanna do a time lapse where it speeds everything up to show something that happened over a long period of time in a short amount, pick a uh, lower frame rate to get that time-lapse effect. But one thing that I do wanna mention, SNQ mode should only be used by somebody that isn't looking to do professional work because the data rate and the quality of this is not as high as if you just shot straight photos and turn it into a time-lapse or shot 120 frames per second internally in camera and slowed it down later on in post-production. All right guys, so the next thing I wanna show you is the FN menu. This is the function menu, and it's going to allow you to access all of your major settings quickly and easily. So you wanna hit the FN button, and once you open up the FN button, you'll see a little menu pop up right here at the bottom. So right here, first thing you'll see in the lower top, in the lower right corner is your exposure mode. So again, you wanna make sure you're set to manual. And then after that, you'll see white balance. You wanna leave white balance on auto. This camera does a really good job at figuring out your white balance. You wanna leave flash comp exactly where it is unless you're using flash photography and then that's a whole other discussion. Metering mode, it's, this is for figuring out what the exposure of this camera looks like. Once you go into metering mode, you have a couple of options, multi, center, spot. I personally find multi does the best because it'll kinda of combine its different metering modes. This is going to give you the best exposure the only time I would recommend using spot where it's really just taking one specific area of your photo and exposing for it is if you're lighting something small on a table or you're trying to just look for, trying to get exposure on a specific thing and not the overall scene. But other than that, I find multi-mode does a very good job. Back in the FN menu, this right here is ISO. We can, I'm actually gonna show you guys a better way to change ISO, but right next to that is focus area. Now, focus area really matters. One of the reasons you probably bought this camera is because the focus modes on the Sony cameras is amazing. It has such good autofocus. So for that reason, 
There's a couple of options here for you. You can choose wide. Basically, wide will look at your entire area, entire image and go, hmm, what needs to be in focus here? Again, these are all auto automatic modes. Zone is basically going to take like specific zones. So let's let me just show you guys what it looks like. It's going to just take like specific chunks of your image, figure out, okay, what air, like if, if we put the setter zone to the left, it's really just gonna focus on this one particular zone and try to always get that in focus. I personally find that it really depends on what you're looking at. Center is going to make it so it just focuses on the very center of the image. Right here, I'm gonna show you guys, like it's always just going to focus on the center. Um, this I would recommend using if I'm shooting portraits. Zone is more so if I may be looking at like animals or race cars or something like that where like I know these things are kind of always in one chunk of my frame. I would use center for that. If you're doing regular landscape photography or just like travel photography, wide I find does the best job. Uh, wide is still going to give you great results even if you're shooting portrait photography. Flexible spot, now this is a bit more complicated but it's basically trying to figure out a spot and it'll either be like, hmm, like, it can, like maybe it's a spot here down to here. It's a bit more complicated and I don't think uh, this is really the tutorial for that. It's gonna take up a little bit more, a little bit too much time. So the main ones you really need to figure out is wide, zone, and center. I tend to keep mine in wide all the time because these cameras do such a good job with it. But if you're someone that feels they might need something else, feel free to change these around. And then focus modes. Now focus mode is different than your spot modes because when you look at focus area, it's basically figuring out what area are we trying to get focus in. Focus modes is actually how it's driving the autofocus, what, how it's thinking about autofocus. So when you go into focus mode, uh, normally you would, these would not be grayed out, but we're just in a specific mode because I'm externally recording with this camera. Single shot is where it just gets one focus and then it takes a photo or it's just like, cool, that's it, I'm not changing focus again. Focus mode, automatic AF, it's basically going, okay, that's the autofocus, but if it changes, it's like figuring things out for you. I don't really recommend using it because sometimes the camera can get confused. But again, it's a Sony camera. These things are amazing with autofocus. The place where I like to keep it is continuous autofocus because basically what it does is it'll get focus and keep focus. But if your focus or if your uh, point of your subject does move like back here, like as you can tell, I'm probably out of focus right now. But if it was a Sony camera, it would just keep me in focus. It would track with it. This is great for anything that's moving. Personally, I keep always keep mine at continuous AF because it does such a good job tracking. And then finally, we have manual focus. Manual focus is where basically you're not asking the camera to do any kind of autofocus for you. You're managing focus yourself. This is only something I recommend if you're doing professional work and you really want to like manage focus or you're looking at something where the camera's struggling with it. Um, one of the reasons to get a Sony camera is because they do such a good job. I would probably never use a manual focus on a Sony camera just because that's why I bought the Sony. Now there's something called DMF, which it's a combination of autofocus and manual focus. Basically the camera will get autofocus for you, but it will still give you the option of changing focus later on if you feel you need to. Now I'm just gonna quickly go over to photo mode where while we're in this menu, I wanna talk about drive modes. Now this only applies to photos, but right here you'll see drive mode. And in drive mode, you'll have a bunch of ways of shooting photos. Single shooting is it takes one photo and it's done. And then it has continuous shooting where basically it will keep taking photos until you tell it to stop or the camera needs a break. And if you press left and right on your uh, D-pad, it has three different modes, low, high, plus, high, mid. Basically, it depends on how, how fast you wanna take these photos. I do not recommend keeping it at the highest because you will probably end up with more photos than you need and the camera will need a break faster than it really needs to. Um, my rule of thumb is for portraits, I'll keep it at low. For maybe just casual, like hanging out with friends, maybe if I'm at a party, I'll keep it at mid. For only action and sports, I'll keep it at high. And high plus, I've never really had a need for high plus. I think it takes too many photos, but you know, if you're having trouble keep catching a subject, try high plus. And below that, you'll have self timer. Now this is a mode that a lot of you guys will probably need to use. And self timer, it comes in 10 seconds, five seconds, and two seconds. Basically, you set your camera up, you hit the shutter button, and it'll wait 10 seconds, five seconds, or two seconds before it takes a photo. Pretty straightforward. And then there's also self timer continuous. Basically, it's the same thing as self timer, but it'll take continuous photos and now you'll see two set two things on here. You'll see 
C3 and 2, 2S. Basically what it does is it can take continuous five photos after 10 seconds, or it could take continuous three photos after five seconds, continuous five photos after five seconds, and it gives you a bunch of combos. Just pick whichever one you think is right for you. And there's a bunch of modes below this for uh, drive mode and bracket modes. These ones are more complicated and you would only really need them if you're doing time lapses. I think it's a bit too complicated for this tutorial, but if you guys would like to see a tutorial on how to do mind blowing, and I mean absolutely mind blowing time lapses with this camera, let me know and I'll make sure to make one. By the way, if you're watching this video, chances are you either just bought a fancy new Sony camera and you wanna learn how to get the most out of that camera or you simply wanna take your photos and videos to the next level. In that case, I highly recommend checking out the Camera Boost course in the link down below. In this course, I'm gonna show you step by step how to technically master every single aspect of your camera, but not only that, I'm gonna show you all of my creative secrets on how to take your photos and videos from just being okay to mediocre to being absolutely stunning and Instagram worthy. Because here's the secret that no one tells you. You don't need fancy camera or lighting to get great results. What you actually need are skills and knowledge and I'm gonna save you time and money by cutting through all the noise and showing you exactly what you need to do to make your work look high quality and professional. So if you wanna take your work to the next level, be sure to check out the Camera Boost course in the link down below. And with that being said, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a taste of what to expect in the Camera Boost course by showing you the most important thing that you need to know on how to make your A6100 look like a professional camera. So one of the things you probably already know about the A6100 is that it does not come with any cinematic profiles or any kind of special modes to get more flexibility with your colors. But I'm gonna show you a hack around that. So assuming you've set this up already to have the exact frame rate and the resolution you want, it does not matter if you're shooting 4K or 1080p, but what you wanna do is you wanna go into the menu settings, you wanna be in the first menu tab, and you wanna go to page nine, and you'll see something called picture effect and creative style. Now, above that, you'll also see DRO or auto HDR. So you wanna go into that, and you wanna make sure this is set to auto. This is going to give you the best dynamic range possible out of your camera. But underneath that, you'll see picture effect. You wanna make sure picture effect is off. And above that, you see creative style. Now, this is going to show you a couple of things. Um, you'll see standard, vivid, portrait, landscape, sunset, all these things, right? But what I wanna do is, I wanna get more flexibility and more range out of my camera sensor. So what you wanna do is, you wanna hit right on the D-pad while you're in standard, and you wanna to go to contrast. Now, you'll see contrast, at set to zero, you wanna to go to negative two contrast. After that, you wanna to go to saturation, you again wanna to go to negative two. After that, you'll see sharpness. Now you actually wanna set sharpness to negative three. But basically, once that is set, it's a very small tweak, but this is going to give you a flatter image so that when it comes to color grading, when it comes to adjusting your color in post-production, you'll end up with a flatter image, which basically allows you to do more tweaks because it's kind of like this with digital sensors. If the color's already baked in, if it's already been shot as is, you're not going to have as much room. But if you shoot everything kind of desaturated, kind of muted, you'll have more room to add more color or have more contrast and sharpness later on. And if you find that you're still not getting enough flexibility, what I would do is go down and make it maybe even contrast, contrast negative three but I would leave the saturation in negative two because you don't want your colors to be too muted. And once you have your camera set to this image, you'll get a little bit more flexibility in your camera image, but you'll also get a flatter, more filmic, more cinematic looking image right out of the camera. So if you're someone that wants to shoot something more artistic, something a bit more cinematic, maybe you wanna shoot short films, this is a great way to set up your camera. And on top of that, what you can also do is go into the other creative styles like Vivid or Portrait and go in there and maybe just mildly tweak some of these settings. I find Vivid is already very contrasty, so I probably wouldn't use Vivid that often, but Portrait does a really nice job with skin tones and you could always lower the contrast on Portrait, lower the saturation a little bit, and this is going to give you a flat image but with that, contra with that portrait or vivid look to it. But just by making this little tweak, you're going to get 15 to 20% more flexibility with your image. 
Well guys, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you wanna learn more about taking your photos and videos to the next level, or you simply wanna master your camera, make sure to check out the Camera Boost course in the link down below. I have tons of students in there sharing information, learning how to make better photos and videos, learning how to better use the cameras that they already own. There's tons of people in there. If you wanna be part of that community, check out the Camera Boost course in the link down below, and I will either see you in the course or in the next video. Peace.